to be or not to be. Welcome to the Actor's Dungeon. I'm your host and DM, Mike Kosh. Thank you very much for joining us. When trying to describe D&D to a friend, I summarized it as the intersection point between video games and live theater. This, of course, gave me an idea, and so I gathered some of my performance friends, put together a campaign, and we are pleased to present to you The Actor's Dungeon, a D&D 5e campaign with a twist. Like a live show, the actors have to stay in character, use their performance to lift the scene off the page, or in our case, the battle map. We are still experimenting with what structure works, what elements work or don't work, so each show will be a little different until we find that perfect structure. That's just part of the fun, though. <laughs> we hope. Welcome back to our first campaign, Far and Away. In this episode, we discover the aftermath of the taking of the Red Fox, and as the players barter for a favor now that they have instated a new captain, it seems trouble is brewing on the wharf. Could it be they were sent away for a distraction? Only time will tell. We now go to tonight's episode, Big Trouble on the Wharf. And on last week's session, our brave heroes took their ship, the Urchin, and were able to run up the flag of Parley to get aboard the Red Fox, where they discovered that although the captain was cruel and eager to fight, the first mate had other plans. The first mate was happy to see a change of command as she wanted the ship for herself. And so, in a light skirmish, the captain was felled, and the Red Fox is now under the command of the first mate. So, Alexander, that is what you missed. Mm -hmm. During the battle, Alexander was helping to prepare the cannons when he saw friend Vlast the Ass take his dagger and leap onto the hull of the Red Fox. The dagger struck true, and but Vlas was left hanging there, realized he might need a second dagger in order to scale the hull. And while his blows were not strong enough to penetrate the hull, he was simply left dangling there like an ass until one of the misfired cannonballs rolled off the bow and struck him in the head. <laughs> Luckily, Alexander was quick and nimble enough to grab his friend before he plummeted into the ocean. But Vlast the Ass, it seems, is now concussed and in the cargo hold. Alexander, you come out on deck to see that the bodies of the, the dead pirates are being thrown overboard, and now the first mate is donning the captain's hat. And although last week we had the other players as the members of the Red Fox, now the NPCs will be played by me. So you can all resume your regular characters, and we will get into another improv challenge in the second act. So, the seas are calm, and the first mate dons the black hat, and she turns to you all, says... Well, now what? Well, I believe that the original plan was for us to take the ship, take your cargo, and then bring it back to the wharf. But honestly, I don't know about anyone else, but I don't right really care what they think. Hmm. Well, to do a dirty turn to the Pirates of Sinker's Wharf, they might, you might find yourself hunted prey in this and the next few aisles, but your ship looks fast enough. I'm sure you can make a clean getaway. A better option. Oh? Hmm. <clears throat> so. so... Oh. By all means, go ahead. So, um, <clears throat> just so we're clear, um, 
you do you do want this ship for yourself, yeah? Oh, of course. I intend to fulfill the mission and take this back to Ironhold. As a privateer, I am aware that I owe you a favor, and I am willing to mm, oblige. If you want some cargo, I'm sure there's some that can be spared. And Lexander, with your wisdom, you feel something rumbling on your feet. You, real, you recognize there's something or someone below deck banging on the floor beneath you. Um, um, <clears throat> what may I ask is, uh, exactly is your cargo? Hmm? Oh, it's mostly other th things we've plundered from other pirates or uh, illegal shipping cartels, etc., etc. You'd be surprised what people do to avoid paying simple tariffs. The cargo is sugar, spices, rum, string, hemp, uh, various silks, cloth, wool. Um, I can get you a full manifest if you'd like. Slaves? No, we don't. And she pauses for a moment. The captain did take one. She kind of rolls her eyes. wouldn't call her a slave. More so, she tried to fight us and... He kept her as some sort of punishment, but um, I would prefer not taking any human cargo, so you're more than welcome to take her off my hands. Hmm. An extra hand is always good. If she's willing to cooperate. Yeah, well, who exactly is she? That's I don't a very know. good question. Oh, some bleeding heart... Her, sh I had a small vessel that was besieged by the captain, and, well, she rumpled his hat. He was not very pleased, so he uh, drowned the rest of her party and threw her in the cargo hold. Oh. I was just thinking of taking her to Iron Deep and letting her, letting her go there as there's no suitable place unless I'm taking her to Sinker's Wharf, but, well, that's just as bad. But by all means, please. So she looks to, looks to one of the sailors. You there, bring out the horse. horse? The guy scoffs, and he goes below deck. Oh, God, she's... And a few moments later, he comes up, tugging on a rope. He's like, come on, just settle down. Oh, You're gonna go free, stop it. And you see, you all recognize the form of a centaur. A centaur is a human torso, or upper torso, with a lower torso of a horse. The what large, the, hell? <laughs> the large creature. Um, she appears slightly messy, tangled hair, uh, tattered clothes, but still filled with quite a bit of fight. And as she is pulled on, to, on deck, she rears up, causing the, the young deckhand who was pulling her up by the rope to fall backwards and somersault. Ah! Unhand me! You have no idea who you're dealing with or the clan whose fury you have invoked. I will... Shut up, the first mate calls. You have some people who are willing to take you on your ship. I can't take you back, but these people, if you choose to go with them, are willing to give you passage to... I'm sorry, where are you going? Not all at once. So we haven't actually, actually figured that part out yet. So look at the centaur. Where are you from? I'm from... <laughs> I'm from the Demagogue Island. Stupid hat. <laughs> Pardon me. I'm from the Demagogue Island, she proudly says, presenting herself with her regal almost... 
a noble-like fashion. Do we even know where that is? I have no idea. Um, I've never heard of the place. No. Alright, you... so... Kayla? I was just going to ask for uh, this new, um, this centaur's name. My name is Serena. She bows gracefully. Pleasure to meet you. Um, Thank you. If you'd like to come with us, we haven't exactly made a final opinion on as to where we're going. Probably not Sinker's Wharf. But, um... Welcome to come with us, I guess. Oh, happily. If you're not, if you're not gonna, you know, keep me in, keep me locked in the brig or take me to Ironhold. The hell are you I doing? Happily going take... to Ironhold. Mm -hmm. Just seems to be where this ship was headed, and I told them I didn't want to be there. But, well, they said I was a prisoner, and I didn't get a choice. Interesting. Right. Well, good for you. We don't have our own boat, so we don't have a brig or a cargo hold to put you in. <laughs> oh, well, that's fantastic. And, sorry, I just got to call a dramatic pause. It seems we have Jamie Thompson coming in. Hey, Jamie. Hey, I don't know if you can hear me. Hello. Hi. I can hear you just fine. Hey. Alrighty. You're and with welcome. Jamie here, I just have to do a quick uh, reformatting of the audience. Oh, Give sorry. Me one mo oh no, we're seriously happy to happy to have you. We will resume. Everybody ready for real? No. <clears throat> I mean, yes. <laughs> Tomato <laughs> Kayla. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Kayla has a tomato. Nuts. <laughs> Joke's on you. She likes salsa. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. clears throat> so sorry. You were saying you don't know where you're going, but you won't keep me in the brig. And, well, that sounds like good enough for me. <sighs> All right. And Aboard. she quickly tears off the rope that was crudely tied around her arms and throws it at the young deckhand who was uh, pulling her out. All right, very well. So... New friend! Oh, kobold, how cute. I tried so, my heart. <laughs> and then the deck mage, who you remember was in the crow's nest comes down huh. well I'm very glad that we were all able to solve this peacefully it's important that we hear what the other side is after and then we can build some sort of rapport now that being said I know that we owe you something so what would you like us to do unfortunately we do have to take our vessel back to Ironhold but if you want to do do something under the guise of plunder, you could simp our ship could follow you back, and then we could help in some sort of bombardment. Um, but yes, let's discuss, let's open a dialogue, let's um, let's work something out. I mean, sounds pretty good to me. That could work. So first order, we throw him overboard. It'd be funny. Uh, uh, what? N no, let's not do that, Mac. I think I think that's a fantastic idea. Oh, okay. Well, um, <clears throat> yes, uh, our ship will play the um, <clears throat> the the captured vessel, of course, which mm. it would be assumed that one of you would be piloting our ship, and um, yes, we can. Uh, when you give the signal, we can. Simply, um, well, wh wh whatever you would like, whether we, um, uh, we all sail away. Um, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. I am talking when I should be inviting more people to speak. This is a, this is a democracy. This is how a, a democracy runs. Hmm. I You're like fun. The idea. 
<laughs> sure. I like the idea. I like it a lot. Perhaps you can come back and, well, they said they wanted the ship. Well, we can give them the, all the cannonballs they want. Oh, splendid. Yes, we are an eight-gun vessel. Um, and then compared with your six-gun vessel, Sinker's Wharf is very heavily fortified, though. So we, uh, we will have the advantage of surprise, which is good, which is very good. And, um, well, yes, uh, I can give the signal to the deck. Uh, we can get started whenever you would like. I'm Thank the you. captain now. The first mate adjusts her hat. I will give the signal whenever you would like. Oh, good. Um, where are the fortifications on the wharf? Oh, dear. The fortifications on the wharf, well, there are two towers uh, flanking mm. either side of the pier. Um, well, a little further out, but yeah, two, the two cannon towers have a very impressive range. Um, right. Most of our their cannons plus their the mortars will make it very difficult to get close if if they thought we were a threat. But we can get oh. under their mortar fire under the guise of being a captured ship, and then from there we just have to worry about the cannon towers. Which you can pepper with cannon fire before they before they can even think to arm themselves. Mm -hmm. Both of our ships can target and can target one tower. Six guns to your eight should make fairly uh, fairly short work. Excellent. Okay. It seems like we have some sort of a stratagem. Counterpoint. We could just leave. Also, another strategy. Unfortunately, Mac, we don't have anywhere to go. I mean, we have a horse lady who's like, I want to go to this island so we could go there. But yeah, do um, we know which way to sail to get there? How long is it going to Does no one have a map? map? Do you Good. know if we even have enough supplies for that? We would need to find the island on a map before we could calculate exactly how, many, how much supplies that we would need. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Another option is... We could share some of our supplies with you, help outfit you with navigation equipment, and send you on your merry way. But I must warn you, the Pirates of Sinker's Wharf will hunt you down. You're welcome to try. Uh, because they're going to love us so much more if we blow up their home. That's, that's fair. Mm. True enough. Let's, um, before we do anything, we should probably do a assessment of the damage. Yes. I agree. All right. Especially with one of us down. All hands. And she just kind of, like, and she points out, um, you, you, and you, uh, follow their captain. Which one of you is the captain? Little one. That would be, that would be me. Hello. The orc. She looks down at Skip. Mm, very well. You seem a little hmm. young. Have you really broken in your sea legs? I'm standing right in front of you. Isn't that enough? <laughs> well put. Very well. You three go with him and run a full inspection on the ship. Make sure they have everything they need for at least a week at sea. Um, there's... You're probably, I can't guarantee you'll be in, you know, good hands, but within a, within two days travel, there's islands in almost every direction. Um, it's a bit of a, if they're not flying the flag of Ironhold, they are probably, well, more of a, it's uh, something of a no man's land out here. Mm. A lot of islands fly their own flag and are their own sovereign entities, so I can't guarantee who will be friendly towards you and who will be uh, your new enemies, but Fair enough. we have some Ka things on our map that can help you out. Kayla, um, I was wondering if you would mind going back up to the crow's nest just to make sure that we're not being watched, followed, or someone's trying to sneak up our broadside. 
Sure thing, you got it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, could I get a bit of help here? And you... I'll look to see the centaur is about to take the gangplank to the other ship and is uh, a little unsure of her footing on such a narrow passageway. Anyone, please? Uh, Wait, I can, I can do this hang, and I just map a guidance on her. <laughs> hang, hang on. I believe um, in you. <laughs> the gang, the gangplank was, and I'll point to the first mate, uh, yours, correct? Uh, no, this was, this is your gang boy. Then bring yours out. All right, so. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. I think, I think. Yep. Can you, um, can you swim? Uh, oh, um, I can, um. No, I, I can't, but I feel tremendously... Other gangplank, please. Hey, look! And the deckhand scrambled to get the other gangplank <clears> across, <throat> but Ryan's guidance, or sorry, Max's guidance, I should say, uh, seems to make her a little more sure-footed, and despite the rocking of the waves, she sways her body alongside, and she makes it over to the urchin. The power <laughs> of 1d4. <laughs> I have no idea what that means, but well done. Uh, sorry. Looks like we're not gonna need it. So, yeah. as soon as you say that, the one guy goes to throw it overboard when the first mate. No, you idiot! We don't need it now. We need it later. Ugh. So why are you taking orders from someone on another ship? Give your head a shake. Oh. Phelan, may I have a perception check, please? You may. Yeah. So, you're I'll back on the urchin, and you oh, quickly scale up the uh, scale up the mast, and perch yourself in the crow's nest. And it's kind of hazy out, but it seems like there's smoke coming from Sinker's Wharf. That's probably not good. She say anything? I see smoke coming from Sinker's Wharf. Oh, bugger. Skip, you got your spyglass? Yes, right here. I hand over the spyglass. I'm gonna do a guide on him so he can look better. Where was my guide? You're in the crow's nest. I'm down here. I can't touch you. So, Aridin, you're about to lift the spyglass to your eye when the kobold bonks you on the hip with his puppet. Right. <laughs> All right. So, does the spyglass add to a perception check, or how does that work? No, it's a regular perception check, but this allows you to see things far away, essentially. Gotcha. All right. Uh, also, if your guidance wasn't clear, you get an extra one d four. Yep. Just because. Nice. All right, so with 22. a 22, your eyes pierce through the haze, and you can see some small fires blazing over the tavern and what looks like Peach's stronghold. You can see the clatter of... Uh, sorry. You can see the clatter of melee in the spyglass as scimitars and shields glint in the sunlight reflecting into the spyglass. It seems like there is trouble on Sinker's Wharf. Looks like the pirates and looks like the pirate factions made their move against Peaches. Well, then we should definitely head back to Sinker's Wharf. Uh. <clears throat> so are you going to Sinker's Wharf or not? I need to know. 
Come now, uh, let's mind our temper, says the uh, the deck wizard. We are in their debt, please recall. After all the Peaches has done for us, I think it's best if we lend him a hand. All right. All right. <clears throat> We're in agreement then. All right, so we will wait for your signal, and when you are ready, we will fire on the cannon towers. Perfect. Yeah, we're going to have to stick to the original plan of limping into port with a prisoner. Yes, absolutely. Right. Bugger. All right, then. <clears throat> right. So, you all pick up the pace to prepare your ships to go into an open combat. All right. And as we set this scene, Curtis... I will need you to open up the ship's uh, stat sheet. We will need that for this next session, or this next part of the session. So let me get that for you. So, you are now all prepared to sail back to Sinker's Wharf. The sea begins to swell, causing the ships to rock as they groan to and fro, but the ships maintain course. And as you get closer, you can see indeed that there is trouble on Sinker's Wharf. And when you thought that, <clears throat> as you were hoping that your ruse might pay off, it seems that the sh that the wharf doesn't want you back, and you are already under mortar fire. What a uh, well. <clears throat> and once again, the gods shit in my breakfast. Lovely. Yep. <clears throat> pirates being pirates, it's what they do. The mortar fire just skirts the edges of the ship. But you remain unscathed. You press onward. Skip, give me a give me a sailing check. Right. Ooh. You hold the wheel tight as the waves rock the boat and the splash of seawater sprays across the deck from the mortar fire but you hold true the red fox you can see the crewmen begin scrambling readying the cannons as you all get into range they make their fire they make their roll And you see the red fox begins to drift off course as the hail of mortar fire comes down and their helmsman falls as the boat rocks from the wake. Well, that's not good. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. Ah, as you draw ever closer, they attempt to make they attempt another round of mortar fire. They are way off. And now as you come into cannon range, they make one last roll, seeing if they can catch you from the distance. They do not. You are now within cannon range. <clears throat> Skip. You have the helm. Just to specify, what is cannon range? Cannon range is... Let me quickly go to uh, the cannon page. Uh, <clears throat> 600 feet. Pretty far. Oh yeah, it's cannon. <laughs> In range of the... Our intended targets. 
I don't think my mage hand is gonna reach him, guys. I'm sorry. No, I would recommend a few of us get into a longship and paddle onto shore. Sounds like a great idea. <clears throat> you lot, best of luck with the towers. Will you be leading that <clears throat> party? I'm kind of useless on the water. I'm not gonna lie. Well, good luck to you. Take who you and, can. And you. Right. <clears throat> so I right. start taking stuff out of a uh, one of the long uh, one of the long boats. All right. They fire their cannons. As you all prepare. Yeah. Really wish. I'm sorry, this is just feedback for. Oh, I can lock the game log. That what was, That's what was happening. Okay. So unfortunately, as you will scramble to prepare the longship, a cannonball rocks the side, breaking, breaking through the hull. Not causing any serious damage, but the ship, the sh part of the ship deck erupts into splinters and fire. Uh, tis blood a flesh wound. <laughs> Stick with the plan. Now, we will need an athletics check to see how quickly you all can muster the longship. So whoever is taking point on that... I nominate uh, Eridan. 23. All right. Eridan, you very quickly delegate the tasks and you begin hauling out the bags and the rope and all the fishing equipment. And once you're all inside with a deft throw of your shield, you cut the rigging down and the ship plops into the ocean. Now, give me an athletics check. And this is everyone in the boat as you all row to the shore. I just have a question for you real quick, uh, Mr. God, sir. <laughs> yes! Um, how how big can my minor illusion be? Because it, it is minor illusion, but also it doesn't specify how crazy it could be. Because I kind of want to make like a duplicate of us rowing like a little bit to the right. Okay. I don't see a uh, minor illusion is it can be whatever it you want it to be unless it specifies it's just simply easier to detect if it is uh, at that level all right cool i just want to make like a second of us to very like 30 well. feet away very well would so we as... have advantage on this athletics check because everyone is rowing at the same time yes oh, except kayla sense. who has a tomato Kayla. Well, never, never mind. <laughs> Phelan, you are given an oar. You start rowing. Please make an athletics check with disadvantage. That's so awkward. <laughs> Alright, so there's already a five in there, and... Yeah, I'm doing again. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on. I want to say I'm going to impose disadvantage on myself because I'm doing minor illusion, too. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. All right, so with that, you all start rowing. Phelan goes to row and drops the oar <clears throat> into the water. The ship, the long ship, now has disadvantage. Whoopsie. <laughs> right. <laughs> I just delegate so that there's an equal amount of oars on either side of the ship and just get them to start rowing again. All right. Because I rolled a 22. So... I was doing all right. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I just got to look at the oar. Did it offend you? I don't Why would you? Not very good with boats. All right, and do you, and and do me a favor. Take out your bow. Anyone starts taking pot shots at us from the shoreline, take them out. Now that I can do. All right, all right. So you all continue 
pushing along, beating your oars against the rising tide. Please stop going Make to my game log. Sorry, that's just really annoying me. Another roll? Yes, please. Do I have to roll? Nope, you have, uh, essentially the whole ship now is rowing with disadvantage. Oh, sorry. <laughs> How is it rolling with disadvantage? I evened out the, ro I evened out the oars. Uh, uh, right, sorry, you evened out the oars. All right, so, Great. yeah. So now with the evened out oars, you are able to row in. And looking back over your shoulder, you see that the two towers are keeping the red fox and the urchin from progressing any closer. However, the urchin is still fighting tenaciously. You guys come up to shore and you see that there is something of a swarthy looking landing party ready and waiting for you. But they're distracted by the other boat. <laughs> <laughs> And I'll get initiative rolls from everybody now, please. Oh, come Wait, on! Wait, actually, how long did it take us to go over there? It what took you a good uh, ten minutes. Uh, okay, that boat was gone minute one. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's all minor illusions got. What is up with my rolls today? Someone rig my dice. I got a nat 20 on an initiative roll. All right. Not a, so, I'm not I got a nat 1. What is you that? Get a, <laughs> that just means you, you get go last. You get an immediate bonus action. Or sorry, Charlie, you get an immediate action, like a surprise oh. round oh, yeah, cool. with a nat 20. Uh, Phelan, you, uh, you only get one action on your turn. Uh, no bonus actions, reactions, or movement with a nat 1. Nuts, dude. So, Aridin, make your move. All right. All right. So, we are coming on shore. What's What and who is directly in front of me? All right. So, you come up to the pier, and I am going to bring up the map now. So, I was expecting the ship, so essentially what you see is a bunch of armed black marauders. You remember that faction? And they are all armed with crossbows. And they begin firing at you all in the longship. <clears throat> right, I will go to the one on the furthest point of the pier. Mm -hmm. And I will attack him. You said I have an extra action? Mm-hmm. Awesome. Okay. I'm attacking with my shield. Uh, does a 25 hit? A 25 will hit. Fantastic. And he is taking all of five points of damage, and I am going to follow up with another attack because I have two of them. Excellent. Uh, 18. An 18 will make contact. Fantastic. <clears throat> uh, he is now taking an additional seven points of damage. All right. Aridin, you throw your shield. You see him raising his crossbow, and bam, the shield hits him, and then it bounces off the ground, hits his crossbow hands. He bonks himself in the face, his nose bleeding, as the shield ricochets off the dock, ricochets off the post, and returns to you. We now go to the top of the order, where it is Aridin's turn. Rose for Aridin for that hit. <clears throat> Oh, um, I am only level three, so I don't have a second attack. I just rolled the second because I was just going to hit that guy twice. With I see what action. you did. Excellent. So. Well, you earned yourself a rose, buddy. 
Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Lexandar, you see Aridin deftly throw his shield, knocking one of one of the crossbowmen off the pier, or knocking them around on the pier. What do you do? How many uh, how many enemies are in front of me? You see five enemies in front of you. Okay, doke. Let's see. You know, personally, I think that uh, I think that this whole awesome thing is missing missing some music. So uh, while everybody else fights, <laughs> I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna play my flute. And let's see, what do I roll charisma? Mm-hmm. All right, I'll roll charisma. Or technically, it'd be a performance check, I guess. Oh yes, 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 performance. All right. And it's not bad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so give us give us an example of the little ditty you're playing with us. Let's see. Um... <laughs> Ah <laughs> oh, yeah. All Missed right. opportunity to go. Da, 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 da. There you go. Yeah. All right. So, could have went Pirates of the Caribbean. Didn't. <laughs> whips out his flute and begins playing a very jaunty, very catchy melody. The crossbowmen uh. are very confused. <laughs> The next one <laughs> just raises an eyebrow and then targets Aridin. <laughs> <laughs> to, to be fair, that that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, with his crossbow, he misses. Aridin entirely. I blame the fife! He quickly points out Lexandar, bringing us to Mac. Oh, God. Uh, I, I just look at the closest one and go, the Algis Blast! Friendship Blast! All right. The power swells within your hand, and from niches comes a blast of powerful energy pushing forth into the crossbowman that Aridin had whacked around with his <laughs> with his shield <laughs> just before he falls into the water you see his chest open up and all the gore <laughs> bleeding out onto the deck push the talk keeps making me roll I swear it's not me <laughs> Oh, good. And one of the marauders falls into the drink. All right. Uh, how close am I, by the way? You, If you want to, with a skilled acrobatics or athletics check, you could scale onto the pier. All right. I want to try to scrabble my way up to where I can get within, like, the biggest cube of people. The Very most well. people around me. That is within 10 feet. <laughs> All right. So... Unfortunately, they are now broken off into two and two. Give me a athletics or acrobatics, please, right. as your nimble skills are put to the test. In I go. I'm afraid so. Give me a hit. reflex save, please. Uh, what one was that? Oh, it's just reflex save. Um, I don't know, like what's reflex on your character <clears throat> sheet? Dext or dexterity, dexterity, dexterity save. Sorry, thank you. I'm afraid you fall into <laughs> the drink. So you I may get like two inches off the boat and go. 
<laughs> Yo, I, I just imagine I imagine Mac is wearing like boots that he's never worn. We've never seen him wearing before, and the shoelaces are scrambled all across. Stole them from the captain. And he immediately tries to step and trips. <laughs> Given given the pi- given the pirate motif, I'm kind of picturing like the puss in boots, <laughs> like the folded pirate boots, but they're like all the way up to his waist because <laughs> his legs are so short. He's just trying to make it work. And yeah, they just like catches on the side of the boat. I don't even like jump at all. It just like flips <laughs> in. <laughs> Why are there spurs? Hey, yeah. I'm just I'm vanished into the water. You don't see me come up. <laughs> oh shit. He's dead. Well, I'll praise it with him. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye. Hi there, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're enjoying tonight's episode so far. So this is the point of the channel where I ask you to please consider liking and subscribing. Because if you drop us a like and a subscribe, we can continue making our show and bring in fun new features and challenges for our actors. Because having the numbers on our channel does help us stand out, but most importantly, having an audience is simply why we perform. So, now, for the challenging part. I must pass my DC-10 Charisma check to see if I can convince you to smash or gently touch, depending on how I roll, that uh, like and subscribe. Here we go. Fifteen! Alright, not bad. So please, if you can find it in your hearts to give that like and subscribe a gentle nudge, we'd really appreciate it. So without further ado, we return now to the exciting conclusion of episode four. All right. So Alexander continues his jaunty tune <laughs> as our friend Mac falls into the ocean, splashing about. <laughs> we now go to the next Marauder's turn. He moves closer to the edge of the dock, targeting Aridin with his crossbow. Aridin, 18 to strike. Um, give me a moment. I actually may have something to do with that. Ooh. Petty. Damage with him. The Why arrow starts moving in you? slow motion. Why does that only work with a melee attack? That makes no sense. Yeah, you need deflect missiles for that. Well, I have the I have the parry maneuver, but it's it says when another creature damages you with a melee attack, you can use your reaction to expend one superiority die to reduce the damage <laughs> of uh, by the number you roll of the superiority die plus three. You'd think if I could see it coming, I'd be able to do that with an arrow. <sighs> oh well, eighteen hits. Alrighty. I think with Barry, it's because you like, you kind of like work with a, if it's like a sword coming at you, you like slide along the length of the sword because they have a a more telegraphed attack. Arrow is like too fast. Shield. (laughs) You try to raise your shield, but as your focus was on Mac making sure your friend didn't drown, it's the bolt just passes the arc of your shield, hitting you in the arm. You take three damage. I mean, friend. Um... The next marauder decides to target you as well. <laughs> as for a... full of like five people. No, it's fine. Just pick on the one guy. It's cool. It's cool. <laughs> Dealing six damage. Let's start taking this personally. <laughs> yeah, one guy fell in the water one guy's playing the flute now let's aim for the one guy who attacked <laughs> yeah that makes sense <laughs> oh is it my turn it is mm-hmm. your turn oh okay mm-hmm. um <laughs> okay um I'm just gonna Aim for the whichever one's closest. I'm gonna aim my bow, and All right. just shoot him. Shoot him with an arrow. 
All right. I'm afraid he... With Where's that up role, with my rolls? He... <laughs> he leans rigged. to the side and your arrow soars past his shoulder. Should have played I, the liar instead. I'm sorry. Yes, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> Captain, there's a mariachi band rolling up on the shore. <laughs> and the next marauder. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. So, distracted by the jaunty flute playing, he decide he makes an attack at Mac in the water. But because he still seems a little... He looks back to the flute ex- as if he's expecting some sort of enchantment or something hap- to happen. But as he can't make up his mind, his crossbow misses. And, and it lands next to Mac, spearing a bystanding fish. And now the dead marauder does not get to finish. go. <laughs> what was that, sir? A rose for the fish? Yes, that was a great fish. A rose for the fish. All right. <laughs> this is a beautiful performance by the fish. <laughs> I even got, I even got the audience fooled. They're like, "Whoa, that fish is talking." All right, Ryan, <laughs> you get that rose. <laughs> the Sean Bean of fishes. It's that one fish has been in every movie; it always dies. All right, this brings us to the top of the order, Eridan. You I, are, you've got a I few would, bolts sticking out of your limbs and appendages. I would very much like to be on the on the uh, the pier, so I'd like to make my movement to get there. Very well. You'd have to make an athletics check to steer the ship in closer. Or you could make an athletics check to try to jump to the pier. Or acrobatics, if you prefer. Uh, Athletics is a little bit better. Um, I will try the athletics, and I will use my rose to get there. Uh, 16. All right. And sorry, you're rowing the ship closer? Uh, no, I was jumping. Oh, using your rose. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, I got rose, R-O-S-E, confused with R-O-W-S. That's what happened. All right, with a 16, yeah, you deftly leap forward, catching the edge of the dock. Oh, what's that? I said tomato for Canada. (laughs) What did I say? (laughs) <laughs> Tomato for the education system in Canada. <laughs> what it has, you... it, has it not suffered enough? <laughs> oh, yeah. Our teachers are currently on strike, by the way. That's, uh... <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, oh, I was thinking of the ones. religious schools that were on the news like last year. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah. No, I mean... Mm. I mean, tomato for them, I guess. <laughs> Can we put nails in it? And then, yes, throw those. Anyway, um, if that's my... Is that uh, considered an action? Or that's is that your a, movement. That's my movement? Fantastic. I am now going... Oh, I have an idea. I am going to... Use a bonus action to use a second wind. All right. And heal myself. Eh, not bad. Nine hit points. Uh, I am now going to attempt to um, grapple uh, the guy in front of me and use him as a human shield. Alrighty. <clears throat> All right, so that's an opposed grapple check. Mm-hmm. Uh, not great, but 15. 
So you grab him, and you you can tell he's a scrappy fellow, and he immediately goes uh, to break out of the maneuver. But you're prepared for this, and you simply trap him around into a headlock and now have him in front of you, positioning him. Yeah, towards the guy at the uh, uh, at the yeah that right. This way, this guy. The uh, one that you were just poking at, the other guy at the further down the. Yeah, that guy. Excellent. All right, Wait. so. You have done that. Luke All right. Xander. Um, yeah, that's it. You continue your jaunty tune. You can tell that <laughs> you've confused quite a few people. <laughs> what do you do? <clears throat> so, um, I'm going to. <laughs> I'm going to jump and spin, twisting through the air, um, still playing my tune. Let's see if I land on the pier. After I land on the pier, <clears throat> with that flourish of spins, with an I'm going to... check of 22, yeah. You hold this <laughs> beautiful note as you just go spiraling, and you get a little whiffle going. It's like... And you just tuck and tumble, and <laughs> and please continue. Beautiful. And then the tune instantly uh, begins to change as if it was like, you know, a remix. And uh, let's see. Hold on. Yeah, so the remix tune comes in and the song changes <laughs> to something like <laughs> Good green. <laughs> okay, so you've got accompaniment coming in. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. And yeah, you just get crouched into the, this nimble position where you can move at the drop of a hat and you continue playing this rather beautiful tune on your flute. Um and and I think I think um <laughs> I think that'll be in my turn. All right. So the marauder is very confused. And he's going to do a wisdom check to see if he can figure out what's going on. He seems very suspicious of you. And he makes an attack. Uh, but you can tell he's a little shaky. And <laughs> both of his crossbow bolts, or sorry, it was one crossbow bolt, he just had disadvantage. He misses you. <laughs> Sorry, just answering a quick message. And he misses. Bringing us next to Mac, who must make an athletics check to save himself from drowning. Well, I don't know how to swim. <laughs> athletics is swimming. All right. How bad is this water? Ah, it's pretty deep. It's supposed to, you're supposed to be able to dock large vessels in this water. And there's probably piranhas or something. Oh, yeah. a 13. <laughs> yeah, with a 13, you're able to keep your head above water doing a brisk doggy paddle. I kick uh, my stolen boots off. I'm sorry. I'll miss you forever. Uh, <laughs> is there a ladder? Can I just like climb up somewhere? Because I'm not reaching the dock like hand stretched mm -hmm. out anymore. You will need a climbing or another athletics check to scale up the dock, or with Phelan's help, you can much more easily get into the rowboat. Uh, weird, weird question. Can I swim under the dock so I'm like between those two guys right in front of me? Mm hmm. All right, I want to swim underneath them. All right, give me another athletics check to see how well you swim. Ooh. 
That's so, great, but <laughs> as you're swimming, you uh, you feel the currents here. Uh, er, this is a, a heavy tide area, so the currents here are quite strong. You are able to keep your head above water, but just barely. All right, cool. Uh, I gotta double check if this is both. No, I mean, there we go. That's easier. Uh, you are now down to bonus actions. Uh, oh, that was an action to move. Okay. Yeah, because you had to use one action to uh, save from drowning, another action to move. Uh, well, shoot, because that's an action. I'm afraid so. I guess I'm just sitting here, then I can't do anything else. I can't reach him. <laughs> Fair enough. Alrighty, so you are able to get into position, and you wait for next time. And this is when... From up on the pier, a rather furious-looking bugbear comes charging in. You remember one of these guys from the tavern brawl. They are strong and they are brutish. These are part of the Yerkstora clan. And he comes in and enters combat. It is now the next Marauder's turn. This one guy runs up and takes partial cover behind these barrels, making him a little harder to hit. He leans out. I'm trying to spin him around. Yeah. Uh, he leans out, targeting Aridin. With his <laughs> human shield. And misses. But does he hit the... His friend? No, he does not. The next marauder... Comes in closer. And targets Phelan on the rowboat. Phelan, you see him raise his crossbow and aim it at you. Uh, what is your armor class, please? My armor class is 17. I thought so. All right, so you notice it just a little too late. And the crossbow bolt hits you. Uh, hits you in the bicep, dealing three damage. Ooh. Now, the grappled marauder is going to attempt to free himself. He remains... or No, sorry, it's opposed. Eridan. Your human shield struggles to free himself. 16. It is pathetic. Stop it. <laughs> Phelan, it is your turn. All right. Let's let's try this again. I'm going to I'm going to aim for whoever's closest again, I guess. Um with my bow. Okay. Do I hit this time? Oh, yes, you do. Slay. I mean, um, damage. Oh. All right, so you send an arrow soaring into him. It hits him right in the chest. He staggers back. And then something interesting happens. Your bow. Eh. An image plays through your mind, and you remember you were at the table not too long ago talking to Peaches, just thinking about your bow and the story that it came with it, and 
For a moment, you think about your family. You think about the dragon clan that came there from the Feywild. And then you wonder if you're ever going to see home again. And just as you do, a blast, it seems the arrow explodes with radiant damage. And give me... I've Actually, I'll need you to <laughs> look at your character sheet, and it should do additional damage if you look at the description of the autumn bow. Yes, each target within five feet of your hit takes five radiant damage. All righty. So, unfortunately, the other guy is still well hidden behind the barrel, but the arrow explodes with radiant damage, and the fellow you hit staggers back. That was something you did not know you could do. All right, and now... We come back to Aridin's turn. All right. So, um, where's that thing? Oh, neat. Uh, at the start of each of my turns, you can deal 1d4 bludgeoning damage to one creature grappled by you. So, might as well do that. Uh, he's taking one point of damage just from being there. <laughs> um, I am going to kind of I got him kind of like around the, uh, around the neck, so I'm just going to feed him a kidney punch because I'm that guy apparently. Uh, does a dirty twenty hit? It does indeed. Oh, he's grappled, isn't he? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, that, that would mean my attack has advantage. It does indeed. Now, I'll just roll again just to make sure I roll a nat 20. And no, nope, that's a 19. Okay. So, on top of the one point, of, uh, he's taking an additional seven points of blood earning damage. All right. So he attempts to wiggle free. And in doing so, he strangles himself on your arm. And then when you tell him to stop that and smack him in the kidneys, he keels over sideways. You hold him firmly. Continuing his impressive flute solo, we have Alexander the Smiling Nomad. Yeah, so I, I feel like my, uh, my rendition didn't give it justice, so this is the vibe, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's a rose or a tomato. I don't know. <laughs> <Something>. <laughs> okay, so. <clears throat> okay, so um, let's see. Where where am I? <laughs> you um, are currently. I uh, hear in uh kind of the got lower you right portion of uh this right angle triangle so there's definitely a guy dead dead ahead of me mm -hmm. okay so um <clears throat> i would like to uh <laughs> um i think what i'm going to do is continue my my groovy uh my groovy dance moves toward him <laughs> Uh, and let's see, we will go ahead and actually do an attack <laughs> this time. All right. Uh, first give me a performance check, actually. <laughs> okay. I'd like to see how mesmerized he is by your... By this dancing, mm -hmm. uh, dancing forward. Mm-hmm. Uh... <laughs> All right, so now that you're on the attack and you're dancing, your flute jam is suffering a little bit, and he oh. seems prepared for you. <laughs> oh, okay. <clears throat> so um, we're going to do this. Oh, God. Yeah, that's a hit. 
So, uh, and then let's see. Get get out of the way. Okay. So I like do this really uh, lame dance up to him, and it starts to <laughs> fuck up my <laughs> my music. <laughs> and um, and as he looks at me strangely, I get close enough to uh, to hit him, uh, punch him right in the shins. <laughs> So yeah, you uh, you do this funky dance right up to him. He looks uh, he looks like he's ready to strike you, swapping out his crossbow for a scimitar, and bam! You punch him right in the shins, and there is a crack as you feel the force ripple through his shin bone. Nice. He will not be running. Uh, he his uh, his marathon dreams will have to be put on hold for a few months. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Uh, with that, he says, why, you little? And so, he quickly <clears throat> rolls a d4. Ooh. All righty. And that uh, is going to screw me over later. But he makes an attack with his scimitar against you. I'm pretty sure an 18 does not hit you, does it, Lexander? Um, what would tell me? Your, Your AC. armor class. My armor class, 19, yes, so it doesn't. Yeah. All right, so his sword carves down, cleaving the air, and it sinks into the wood of the wharf, just as you do a funky dance move and pull your leg out of harm's way. <laughs> Mac. Give me an athletics check to maintain your swimming in the current. You are good. You found a bit of support from one of the beams beneath. What would you like to do? Okay, so to clarify, was it moving or just staying alive that used my action? It was... A technically moving but also um it was because you had to do so twice you had to roll to not drown having plunged in and then moving before so now this is essentially a bonus action you're using to uh maintain or i uh, know i'd say it's probably a movement action to uh stay afloat okay will it be possible for me to just climb on deck then at this point because i can't do anything down here Oh, can you not uh, still cast a spell? I mean, I can, but I have to, like, have an unobstructed range on them. I see, yeah. You cannot see I mean, them. at least for the stuff I can do that mm. would be useful. Yeah, okay. So Especially yeah. now that one guy's dead between <laughs> us. Yeah, so you, uh, you realize you can't really see all that well through there. And which side would you like to swim up, up to? Uh, I'll do, I'll do the left. Yeah. Alrighty, so you come out just uh, at the edge of uh, the post, and uh, I will need another athletics check to climb up. Yeah. Uh, I used up my action, right, just to clarify. I want to make absolute sure. Yes, it will, I'm afraid. Uh, okay, uh... Nope. I'm a slippery what? little boy. So you you grab a you grab a hold and you try to launch yourself up to save you some time. But the next thing you grab is very slippery and seems to be some form of sea slug and not a piece of wood at all. And you fall back into the water. I eat the sea slug though. <laughs> That's I'm why hungry. you fall in like, oh, <laughs> ah. I get something out of this. Uh, just because I can do a bonus action still, I think. Yep. I'll, I'll just do a draconic cry right now. I'll just see how friends you have. All right. And, what's, uh, that... what's the range? Uh, 10 feet. I think that guy's right. in it, right? This guy, yes. Yeah. Yeah, that, he's fine. 
<laughs> that just means everyone gets, if you go for him, you have an advantage. Excellent. Okay, good to know. Oh, wait, that won't let me draw on him. All right, this guy has advantage. Good to know. Stop doing that, please. Stamps. And we continue oh, actually, along. I'm so, I forgot about oh. my rose. It'd be too late to use that. To no, it's not too late to use the rose. You may yeah, not yeah. get to eat the sea slug, though, unless you roll quite well. Right. No Damn, snack. that slug. Right. <laughs> He's really thinking about that slug. <laughs> yeah, I, I imagined falling and eating a slug, but instead <laughs> I actually... <laughs> <laughs> All right. He never and had so, anything in his hand. This time, you nimbly leap up, and you are now on the pier. Yeah, I still do my draconic cry though. All righty. And yeah. he's the same guy, is still affected. All right, and now the juggernaut's going to charge in. And Charlie, you hear this guy charging up to you. Mm -hmm. He is, sorry, just going to stay a couple things out of melee range. And you see he raises a large shield. And you recognize a tactician when you see him being a fighter. You know this guy is not quite as scrappy as these other marauders are. This guy means business. And... Now we go to, sorry, this guy's turn. So, Phelan, he was not so happy about his head being blasted with radiant damage, and he raises his crossbow, he knocks an arrow, and he fires at you. It misses, and he is embarrassed. Ha <laughs> ha, loser. <laughs> the guy hiding behind the barrel takes a couple steps forward, now hiding, taking cover behind the marauder or the juggernaut, and also comes off to the shore, and he targets you. Oops. Wasn't supposed to be the scimitar, but either way, um, yeah, you would have failed anyway. And yeah, their crossbow bolts simply uh, sink into the wood of the rowboat. It is your turn, Phelan. Okie dokie. Um, I wanna, I wanna attack the same dude I did last time. All right. Um, with my bow. Let's see. Okie doke, and then. All right, so you see he very quickly knocks another arrow on his crossbow, but by the time he looks up, your arrow has gone through his skull and out the other side. <laughs> he tumbles into the water, and he disappears. <laughs> All right. Phelan, is there anything else you'd like to do on your turn? You still have a move action. Um, no, I'm going to stay on the boat. All right. Actually, um, because I did say there's a current, I now need an athletics check from you to oh. uh, make sure that the boat is not beginning to drift away. Oh, okay. I don't think it does. All right, yeah. So you are able to... Mm -hmm. With the mounted oars, you're able to quickly drop it in and lean against it so you have enough drag so that the waves are not pushing you too far off course. Oops. All right, and now for... this confused fellow. <laughs> So, and sorry, I forgot, uh, Alexander, you had moved into melee range to punch him in the shins. So he is now going to whoops, swipe down again at you with his scimitar. 
And again, you deftly dodge him, bringing us back to Eridan. Guy in my clutches takes three points of damage. All right. And, um, yeah, if he's still alive, I will attempt to damage him again. He is still alive. All right, then. Uh, does a 17. Yes, it will. Fantastic. Uh, takes an additional seven points of damage. Ooh. So, he struggles. And you're, you tighten your grip on him. And he goes to throw his elbow into your nose. But you simply stop it. And you pull his neck back and punch him a, a couple times in the back. And you see him spurt up a bit of blood and he's just there's a hazy look in his eye and you can tell he's just hanging on Alexander I mean, your funky dance moves seem to be keeping you safe indeed <clears throat> okay so um I'm going to uh continue my barrage of uh <laughs> of dancing attacks <laughs> uh on this confused dude with a flurry right. of blows so you bust a move and bust some bones yeah friendly reminder you got advantage mm -hmm. oh yes uh, i will need it <laughs> And uh, what do I roll for advantage? You if just you, roll an attack roll a second time. If uh -oh. you right, if you right click on the hit bonus, I think it's like a plus whatever it is for you to attack. It'll bring up a little menu. It'll have advantage, roll normal, and disadvantage. You click on advantage and then click roll. It'll just roll two dice. Oh, gotcha. Nice. Had a subscription to D and D Beyond for like a year before I figured that out. <laughs> Okay, so uh, with my flurry of blows, the first um, is a thirteen. I'm not sure if that connects. The second mm -hmm. is a the second is an eight, mm -hmm. and the third is a twenty-four. Yeah, even uh, you don't even have to bother rolling advantages; they're all successful. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay, let's see. The first hit did eight damage. Alrighty. You you hit him now. The blow to the shin landed, so now you come around with a hook to the knee and you feel the bone nice. crackle beneath your nice. beneath your fist. The second hit hit a seven. He buckles forward and you hit him with an uppercut, catching him in the genitals. He lets out a very, very shrill cry. Nice. And my final hit. The six. The blow to the junk caused him to buckle his knees, and he leaned forward, and that's when you hadoukened him, hitting him right in the chin, sending his head back, and he crumples over to the floor. Mm. He is no more. Nice. Mm -hmm. All right. Now... Charlie, the marauder you have grappled is going to attempt to break free. Got it. Give me your athletics check, please. He struggles against... Uh, uh, it's only an 11. <laughs> All right. He finally manages. He bites down on you. <laughs> Ow! And as you react, he suddenly scampers away out of your grasp. Is, is he perchance leaving a five foot range? Yeah, he er, he is going to then, sorry, not leaving a five foot range, but now he's yeah. just going to take a swat at you with his scimitar. All right. And I thought it was an action to break free, wasn't it? Normally, yeah. Okay, sorry, I think you're right. 
Uh, so he gets his scimitar out. There we go. Ryan gets a tomato. <laughs> and this brings us to Mac. You are finally up and at him. All right. I, I'm going to turn to our gnome friend and be like, watch this. I'm built different. And I'm going to scuttle over to like right in kind of the center of all the people standing around. Uh, and I'd like to use my fey presence to uh, scare them. I just run up. I'm like, boo! And they okay. got to they got to make um, a wisdom saving throw. <laughs> all right. Got boom. Who <clears throat> who has to make a wisdom saving throw? All the enemies in the ten foot range. I think it's ten. Let me double check. Alrighty. And what is the DC on 10 that? Ten foot is cube. Thirteen 15. or fourteen? Fifteen. Fifteen. Excellent. So this guy is suddenly frightened. Ah! Just put his skull upside down so I know that. The juggernaut, on the other hand, is not so easily intimidated. Nope, he is. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, this guy is 15 feet away. So he ah, just looks darn. on, wondering what the hell is going on. <laughs> I just like, Bill! That scared <laughs> a big guy. What's the... Is it, is it, like, specifically your enemies within 10 feet, or each creature within 10 feet? Uh, uh, I guess it's it says each creature. Yep, okay. all right. Aaron. All right, are you going to get scared by my little boo? All right. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I, would, I, would ver I would very much imagine you kind of like, boo, but there's like that Galadriel kind of going evil very, very briefly that happens. Just, Jesus, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, just little tendrils go <laughs> real quick. Third, and you are like shocked it. as the cobalt friend suddenly <laughs> unleashes this wave of darkness and tentacles just from screaming boo. Put that back. <laughs> uh, surprise! So now they have the frightened condition, do they not? They are all frightened, yeah. Uh, all right. Just doing? for this round, though, until my next turn. Can't Six, willingly eight. move closer to the source of your fear. Okay, cool. All righty. So he, all right. So the juggernaut starts going, "Fall back! Fall back!" And he uh, takes a couple step backwards, and ordering his men to fall back from this scary kobold. Uh, so this guy is going to make an attempt to flee. He does not take a disengage action because he's too afraid. That's a shame. I will take a swing at him if he is leaving my range. All righty. So he just goes, ah! and attempts to... It seems like he's going to jump <clears throat> off the pier. Now, I do hate to be the bearer of bad news. But because I'm within sight of you, you have disadvantage attacking him. If you are frightened. Yes. Disadvantage on ability checks, attack rolls, source of fear was in line of sight. Yep. All right. Uh, so 16 or a 20. Okay, well, the 16 hits. Um, so he goes to jump into the water, and you simply help him by um, removing his head from his body as he goes in. <laughs> Kayla, unfortunately, a head rolls into the the longboat with you. Oh, his lovely. last look is that of terror, having been frightened by the kobold. Very scary, I know. <laughs> Phelan, it is your turn. Alrighty. Um can I can I reach the the big boss? 
-hmm. With the bow, with my bow. Because of your angle, you will do so with disadvantage. He has partial concealment. Okay, never mind. Um, is the other guy? Yes. Okay, I'll hit the little guy then. All right. And you do so indeed. (laughs) Your arrow sings through the air. Oh, oh, God. Geez. Yeah. Oh, Jesus, right. Sticking right in the side of his neck. <laughs> he cough and he coughs and gasps. All right. Aridin, it is back to you. I can't move towards you. I would like to move in the most roundabout way uh, to in between uh, Mac and the Juggernaut. <laughs> okay. Like literally, just doing a huge, like keeping just like all right, just keep your tentacles to yourself, Mac. <laughs> God damn it! Why would you do Take that? A few steps back. <laughs> I'm not moving toward him. I'm not moving toward yeah, him. And then just... I'm not looking at him. So I'm just... <laughs> so I'm going to throw my shield at the back of the juggernaut. All right. Now is he hunkered down somewhere, or is he or is he still kind of moving? No, he was moving. He's behind his shield. Uh, he was retreating backwards. So I have him upside down just to remind me that he's frightened, but he's actually still facing you with his shield up. All right. I'm going to give him a shot. Uh, 16. I'm guessing that doesn't hit. Mm -hmm. Your shield bounces off of his shield and returns to you. Knock, knock. I'm not falling for that. We'll see. Lexandar, (laughs) your funky dance moves has destroyed to this man in front of you he is folded down into a, a size that he was not aware he could fold down into nice so now I would like to um, I would like to man anim- basically <laughs> I want to animate jump from uh, each of these uh, each of the posts in the pier to the uh to the next orc along the right hand edge. <laughs> Let's see. Uh oh, is nice. that acrobatics? That'd be acrobatics. Let's see. Maybe someday. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Okay. So hop uh anime style across these piers, doop doop doop. Your other um, right. Yeah, your other right. And um, land behind him and proceed to uh, attack the back of his knees <laughs> with a flurry of blows. All right. All right. So let's see. First attack 15. And it does seven damage. All right, don't bother doing the rest of your flurry of blows. Oh, okay. He, you hit him in the. <laughs> you you go to hit him in the back of the knee, but he tries to turn around to catch you with his scimitar, and you end up punching punching up right into his spine, and you hear this, you hear the crack like, like a couple of rocks smashing together, and he keels over backwards, falling into the ocean. Uh <laughs> You realize his balance might have not have been all that great. He did have an arrow sticking out of his neck, and he seems to have lost a lot of blood. All righty. So it is everybody versus the Juggernaut now. Uh, Alexander, I yes. will uh, friendly reminder: you have something called the Touch of Death. When you reduce a creature within five feet of you, do zero hit points. You gain eight temporary hit points, oh, and you have you, done man. that. Tw- you have done that twice now. So if so you go does up it to stacks. 
Yep. Uh, I believe that I, I believe it only lasts for. Um, uh, so you're starting when you choose to be in tradition. Hit points. Yeah. Okay. Um, so up on your hit point bar mm-hmm. is current max and temp. Click mm-hmm. on temp and put in 16. Nice. Awesome. Okay. So, um, and and how long does it last? It doesn't say. Okay. So I imagine just until after this combat. I would imagine so. I would imagine it to the end of the encounter. Yeah. Okay. Cool beans. All right. So for, for my for my last little bit, I would like to resume playing my flute. All right. <laughs> so yeah, you are admittedly I gave you a little extra bonus uh um uh, movement because I realized that uh, the the hexes are a little bit the, uh, yeah, more than I wanted them to pier. be. I wanted it to be about ten feet across, but this has it like thirty feet. But That's kind of the length. Yeah. Uh stuff learning for I'm still new to maps, everybody. I apologize. But you know, that being said, so you're able to uh prepare your flute. Alrighty, and there are no marauders left. So we pass now to Mac. Hey, that guy's gonna be so. First off, good murder song. Second, uh, that guy's gonna be real mad in a sec. So I'm just gonna shuffle a little bit to the side so I can get a clear shot of him. And I'm just gonna let me get my boy on him. Took him off for a second to be more scary. <laughs> It's just Eldritch Blast, Friendship Blast. It's both of them. It's interchangeable. Uh, eh. Blah. That's not a great hit. <laughs> yeah, I'm but, afraid it just splays. But I have a thing. Uh, I just saw this in my bonus actions. Mm-hmm. Um, I would like to use uh, the Arcana check. Excellent. Let's see what happens here. <laughs> Nothing happens. All right. But Mac, you feel something in your spell as you, f- as the power washes against his shield. You realize you think you can do better. And although you're not quite sure what this means or how it's supposed to go, you you know that you can do more. Yeah. If only. All right, so the Juggernaut peers out from behind his shield, and he goes, he just grins at you, Eridan, and then he makes a beeline for Lexander. Cool. <laughs> mm-hmm. That was supposed to be with advantage. Oh, I see, and then you click roll, so I got to keep that 10. Alrighty. So, Alexander, with a 22, he whacks you with his Morning Star. You take seven damage. Ooh. Wait. Is, Lex- is Alexander within five feet of me? Wait, doesn't matter. No, Let's he's supposed to be within ten feet. Ah, I see. Okay, I don't think I can do that just yet. All right, continue. All righty. And then... Phelan, it is your turn. Uh, Unbeknownst to him, by rushing Lexandar, he is now within your bow range. Awesome. All right, so I'm going to do that. Then I'm going to aim my bow at him. Um, does that hit? I'm afraid it does not. At the last minute, he notices he has gotten within your eyeline, and he raises his shield. Oh, dear. You are, your shield is, bl- or your weapon is blocked. 
Nuts. Um, so even if I miss, can I take a bonus action? Mm-hmm. Um, can I take my bonus action then and do a face step? So yes, I can you can. Teleport onto the pier. Oh, she's cool. <laughs> Whereabouts would you like to appear? Um, kind of like right, like if you just drag the thing like right across, like a little far, a little farther back. Yeah, like there, yeah. like there. Yeah, right there. <laughs> That's, so, yeah. you take a step off the boat, and it's like your foot disappears into a a layer much like somebody would simply sink into the sea only you sink directly into the air and you drop right on this section here um he's more than 10 feet away right he is yes ah nuts okay never mind then eridan all right. I would very much like to move in behind him and then attack, so I have flanked him. All righty. So you get into position. Ah, I'm just going to put you here. You get into to flanking position with your friend. All right. And I shall attack. All right. Lexol. All right, I'm pretty sure a 24 hits. It does indeed. So you see him briefly look over his shoulder going, what? And kind of slash at the back of his legs with the uh, with, with the shield. Uh, ah. Under the shield, and he takes six points of damage. He grunts. <laughs> what do you think you can accomplish by coming back? You should have taken that ship and gone. Oh. We wanted to show. We wanted to show you the shiny cannons that we got. <laughs> Peaches isn't fit to rule. His name is Peaches for crying out loud. You're about to be killed by a gnome. So, it's... and with that, Alexander, I will need that performance check again, please, if you are looking to continue your pipe playing. Let's see. Oh, I toss that shit to the side, and it makes a <laughs> musical tone as it flies off to the <laughs> flies around on the uh, pier. Pong, pong, pong. <laughs> and I would like to. How I've never actually used my quarter staff. Hmm. Um, how do I use my quarter staff? Mm-hmm. Well, you'd have to take it out of your equipment bag oh, and so that would be a, a move action to get that ready okay and then yeah you should just be able to treat it like an attack i believe your okay i don't know if it would add much to your attack though maybe charlie you can because i think uh, you're cool. Yeah, sorry. the quarter uh, the quarter staff uh, for him is considered a monk weapon, so the attack bonus shouldn't change. The only okay. thing that'll change is it does more damage. It does do okay. more damage. Okay. Yeah. Well, as of right now, he, with his unarmed strikes, are doing a D four. The quarter staff deals a D six if he's using it with one hand, or d a D eight if he's using it with two. So you should be able to hit the equip icon. Yeah, I, I got it equipped um, from the, uh, yeah. And so now that should now feed it into your attacks. Yep, I got it here for me now. Perfect. All righty. Okay, so I'm going to pop, use this guy. Wow. <laughs> that doesn't even hit. <laughs> All right. So you spend a... You sp <laughs> so just for ease of transportation, you're, we'll say your quarter staff can... Uh, be broken down into two smaller pieces. So you take it from your backpack, you fit it together, you twist it, and you hear the click, and then you go to swing it, but you realize, oh no, it's supposed to be clockwise, not counterclockwise, <laughs> and you quickly scramble to fit it back together. <laughs> what is this? This ends now. He grunts, even though it is now Max's turn. I just... Because I feel like insulting his masculinity would be a good idea. I'm like, hey, you were scared of me for a minute. Admit it. And I cast. I was not afraid. 
I made a strategic retreat. Yeah, retreating for what? Something you were afraid of? Ha! Friendship blast. <laughs> 23. Oh, God. Uh, so he goes to raise his shield, but the force of it throws his shield to the side and pushes through, <laughs> blasting him for 11 damage. <laughs> oh, I'm spooky. And it singes his leather armor, leaving a... His, he is a bugbear, so his body, his torso is covered in this thick hide. And you can see it singeing and oozing underneath. Anyway, I'm actually kind of scary here, too, so I'm going to back away a bit. And I just <laughs> go to join our ranger friend in the back over there. As far as I can. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> All right. And so, <laughs> we now go on to Phelan's turn. Yes. Okay. All right. I'm going to do the same old, same old. Right. Shoot the bow. Uh -huh. Wow. So unique. Awkward. Um, does that hit? I'm afraid it does not. That's cute. Never mind. Sorry. Alrighty. So, like, then we're taking back this island, and there's nothing you can do about. And he just, as he's, as he's talking, he just, I uh, doesn't even seem to notice, but he raises his shield, blocking Phelan's arrow. <laughs> nice. You hear a quiet curse <laughs> coming from Phelan. Bring us <laughs> back to Eridan. All right, uh, where am I here? Here we are. Do I have anything else? Otherwise, uh, nothing as of right now. So I'm just going to be a one-trick pony, unfortunately, but I'm attacking with advantage. So, all right. He's eating my shield. Not this round, actually. Sixteen. Yeah, I'm afraid your shield digs into his shield, like. <laughs> I'm not going down so easily. Uh, no. He, he grimaces at you, twisting back to block your shield with his shield. Alexander, he is easy pickings. My favorite space is available, the back of his knees. So <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to roll for fury of blows. You make contact. Right. Let's see what this first one does. Boom. He buckles over, falling down to one knee. Yee. Yeah. Was he blocks the second attack? I'm afraid so. As he he buckles down, you aren't expecting the change in his body movement, and you miss. Man, he's fast for a big fella. Sheesh. He now twists over to keep his shield between you and his tender, tender knees. <laughs> Your fist bounces off of his shield. Do like the Jackie Chan. <laughs> <laughs> Use your flute. <laughs> I believe with uh, Flurry of Blows, though, you get one more attack, don't you? Uh, I thought it was three. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I just realized you did do three. For some reason, mm -hmm. I thought it was two. But yeah. So. <clears throat> Alrighty. And he grunts, bringing us to Mac. Hey, this has been working well so far. Friendship Blast again. Not working so well anymore. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll do my uh, Arcana again, though. Because I think right. I can just do that uh, however many times I want. So, pew! That's a bit better. Hmm. Uh, plus two. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid even with a plus two. But you feel strange as you realize you're able to, by focusing, by bringing your kobold heritage, your memories. All That's fine for are... my friends! And the power of friendship. One, all those times... Around the campfire, all those, you know, crickets and bats and friends you met in the forest. You think about them and your spell is strengthened and you're not quite sure what's happening. But you know 
you know that if you just push and persevere, but then the juggernaut decides he's going to attack this gnome and push him off the edge. He attempts to bash you with his shield, Lexander. Ooh, you take damage. Make an athletics check, please. Ooh. Lexander, you take 10 damage, and you are pushed back, and you go into the water. Stop hitting my knees! Phelan. I'm going to try, try again. Third time's the charm. Oh my god. <laughs> Rude. Alright, Phelan, despite your best efforts, you just can't seem to hit him. He's just too thick. Eridan. Ah, <laughs> oh, shit, that cake is blocking the arrows. Uh, Michael? Yeah. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. He's just hip checking them away. <laughs> All right. I'm going to take a swipe at him with the. Uh... Uh, with the shield, uh, 22. Yeah, you hit. Just kind of uppercut it, uh, bring it up so he's taking eight points of damage. Oof. And with that, <laughs> the uppercut, as you see him, he has to, he staggers back as he tries to block Phelan's arrow, and you know, he sees it the same time you see it. Your eyes lock as he realizes he's vulnerable. No amount of thickness is going to save him now. And you go in for the uppercut with the shield, and you see his eyes flare at you, this one last look of hatred. As you bring his neck up, the crack, the sound, the shudder, and he stumbles back, a dead, dead bugbear. I didn't hit your knees. Is I he found still on the poop. dock or is he fall in the water? Ah, he's still on the dock. Okay, cool. As he's fading out, I want a real quick minor illusion. I voted for Peach's a little badge on this shirt. <laughs> so <laughs> he goes down. Aridin, you give him your last line. <laughs> and just before you turn away, a little I voted for Peach's button appears on his lapel. <laughs> 